Well, there's no problem. If you had a gun, shoot him in the head. Twenty twenty three has been a huge year in gaming. With so many great games releasing, it's hard to be pessimistic about the future of this titan of an industry. Uh, n never mind. It's terrible that so many great people are getting laid off because executives would rather line their pockets than give a small percentage of their salary to the people who deserve it most. With that out of the way, let's talk about my top ten favorite games that have released in twenty twenty three. Diablo 4 is number 10 on this list not because of it being a super intense and stimulating game, but because of it being a super enjoyable and addicting multiplayer ARPG experience. Whether you want to grind for loot for hours upon hours to craft your character into a monster that decimates everything on the battlefield, or if you just want to drop into this live service experience whenever there's new content, there's surely enough here to keep fans of RPGs and loot driven experiences sated. I think I'd be attacked if I said this was the greatest ARPG experience. But Diablo 4's modernization and presentation of a genre that can feel very old very quickly to me was very very highly appreciated. I should however mention Diablo 4 doesn't have as much content as I'd like after reaching max level or after finishing the main story experience which is part of the reason it's not higher on this list. In a live service game that's meant to be played for hours upon hours I think the end game is just as important as the main story experience so hopefully I'll view this game in a better light in the future with the steady content flow that Blizzard have promised. Super Mario Wonder could easily be many people's favorite game of 2023. However, for me, it's my ninth favorite game that's come out in 2023. Super Mario Wonder is a super well-crafted 2D platformer, and I don't think I need to say much else for people to know if this game is for them. If you like 2D platformers or platformers in general, I highly recommend that you play Super Mario Wonder. If not, this probably isn't going to change your mind on the genre that you're not very fond towards. For those who do like 2D platformers, Super Mario Wonder manages to modernize the 2D Mario formula through layering new gameplay mechanics over on top of the existing super strong foundation. There are these things called wonder seeds that you're able to grab in each level, and regardless of the bounds of the world <laughs> the level is set in, the wonder seeds are able to diversify and make each level feel distinctly unique from each other. The insane amount of visual diversity and gameplay diversity woven throughout Super Mario Wonder is one of the reasons it's my ninth favorite game on this list, even if platforming as a genre isn't my favorite. And the pacing of these levels paired alongside the online feature that allows you to seamlessly play with other players online almost as if it was a souls-like or strand like experience was incredibly compelling and fun if it is your favorite genre i'm sure this could easily be your favorite game of the year The Dead Space remake that released earlier this year is great, and that's why it's in the number 8th spot on this list. It does everything that a remake should strive to do. It doesn't take away from the original vision, but it isn't afraid to make change when it makes sense. Exploring a desolate yet infested space station with a beautiful atmosphere that was eerie was invigorating. And with thrilling enemies and exciting forms of progression, this game was a joy to play through. The story wasn't anything superb, and I'd argue that the amount of tools that are at your disposal throughout your playthrough make this game less tense than I'd like it to be for from a gameplay perspective. But overall, the Dead Space remake was more than enough to demand my time and undivided attention to play through this fun survival horror experience. Another survival horror experience that I had a ton of fun with in 2023 was of course the Resident Evil 4 remake. Honestly, it's kind of hard for me to say this is a survival horror game per se because of the complete lack of tension I felt throughout the entirety of my playthrough. So I, I as a, I guess, action survival horror game, Resident Evil 4's remake really does deliver and that's why it's number seven on this list. Just like the previous remake, Resident Evil 4's remake does everything that a remake should strive to do. It takes the original game, gives it a new coat of paint, and improves the base experience when it's needed. The fun enemies that force you to manage your resources because of the limited amount of supplies throughout this world are what make this a survival horror experience. But the over-the-top action sequences and lack of atmospheric tension make this game feel far more action-y than other survival horror experiences. And for many players, it's maybe why they might love this game more than other games of the same genre. It doesn't reinvent anything. Thing. I mean, it is a remake, <laughs> but it executes everything that it attempts to do at a very high level. 
Hi-Fi Rush is a strange one for me. Not that I think it's a strange or weird game, although I guess it like technically is because it's very unique, but more so because a game like this is usually not nearly this fulfilling for me. I'm usually not super into games that have super campy stories, even if I liked Resident Evil 4 a lot. And ironically, the sixth, sixth game on this list, Hi-Fi Rush, has an incredibly campy comic book story, which for some would be enough reason to instantly attach to this game. But for me, it was more so the gameplay and how the action and rhythm mechanics were woven together so effortlessly. I love action games. What surprised me was how invigorating, fulfilling, and approachable the rhythm mechanics of Hi-Fi Rush were. I felt myself starting to dance during large combat encounters in Hi-Fi Rush as I was playing the game, and was not only being gratified by defeating large groups of enemies that were engaging, but also by syncing up my button presses with the beat of the music in the game. The music is the soul of Hi-Fi Rush, with the combat story and level design making up the rest of this beautifully crafted and super diverse action game. The boss fights, level design, and music make this game an incredibly strong offering. And even if you're not super into the aesthetics or storytelling of this sort of experience, I'd recommend you to try this game if you're a fan of action or rhythm games because you really won't regret it. Okay, so like maybe this is cheating, but I need to put Cyberpunk's expansion Phantom Liberty on this list. Even though it's an expansion, Phantom Liberty is number five on this list with great reason. As an isolated experience, this expansion is easily in the upper echelon of video game storytelling. With its handling of mature topics, complex characters, great acting, and interestingly woven together plot, this story is super strong. And as an expansion, Phantom Liberty fires from all cylinders. It improves the core combat of Cyberpunk in more ways than one. It further elaborates on an already the rich world. And of course, when Phantom Liberty's story is paired alongside the base story Cyberpunk, it really does make it that much more of a fulfilling experience. The numerous updates to Cyberpunk after its initial um, disastrous launch, on top of this phenomenally crafted expansion really did force me to put this on the list and it really was more fulfilling than most games that I've played this year. The fourth game on this list is Spider-Man 2. This super fun cinematic action adventure game is in many ways an improvement over the previous two games that came before it. I don't think the narrative was as compelling as the first game. There were a few spots where I felt the game dragged on for a bit too long, and some bits weren't as impactful as I'd like them to be, but the beautiful action set pieces that are incredibly cinematic did their job by filling me with adrenaline. And the larger than life popcorn flick story, when paired alongside super fun action combat and boundless traversal, was incredibly fun. I love Star Wars growing up, and Star Wars Jedi Survivor managed to rekindle that flame once more. I love large cinematic story games, and while Jedi Survivor doesn't have the greatest storytelling as far as those games go, the entire last third of Jedi Survivor's story not only demanded my attention, but surprised me at every turn. It's a Star Wars story at almost every step of the way, with fun characters and fun action moments, but maybe grown up a bit more. It managed to rekindle that joy I had as a kid, but Jedi Survivor wasn't afraid to take risks and address more complicated topics in its storytelling. The core combat and exploration is also pretty good. I'd argue that the core combat could use a bit more attention and variety in enemies, but it managed to be interesting and gratifying in at least more than one area. And that exploration that heavily borrows from the Metroidvania genre was pretty fun. It does, however, have some pretty sketchy PC performance, so if you're not playing this game on console, make sure your PC can handle this game before buying it. Uh... Yeah, I don't really got much to say about this one. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom was paraded as the game of the year by many when it initially released. It's a phenomenal video game, a super fun sandbox, super fun traversal, super fun puzzles, and you're able to go to these puzzles with the super fun traversal in this really cool sandbox. And uh, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty fucking great. I don't, I don't really got much to say that hasn't already been said. I wish the story was a lot more interesting, but the other elements of Tears of the Kingdom are so fucking strong that I can't really put it any lower on this list. And before we talk about the one game to rule them all, I think it's important to talk about Alan Wake 2! Bro, you forgot Alan Wake 2! What the fuck is wrong with you? It's like Resident Evil 4, but it takes itself seriously. And the biggest, you have Baldur's Gate 3 as number one. You fucking d and Jorgoblace have CS or something. Anyways... Come on, come on. You knew what it was. It kind of had to be the first game on this list. Baldur's Gate 3 is arguably the greatest RPG to ever have been created. And if you love the idea of player choice in regards to narrative and gameplay mechanics, you will probably fall in love with this game. Everything in Baldur's Gate 3 is tailored to the players playing the game. It's the most authentic Dungeons and Dragons experience in video game form. The race that you choose to play, the class, how you approach combat or choose to avoid it, all of this and more matters. It's something that's so fulfilling for people who love player choice. And of course, there are large 
large RPG-like dialogue sequences that can derail the entire experience or form the narrative into something that was far more compelling than you thought possible in this game. It's a really phenomenal game, and, uh, you know, uh, um, there's been tons of content about it if you want more information. But hey, if you think I missed something, let me know. It's been a truly great year for game releases.